Politically Speaking. I'm Elizabeth Benyon, Professor of Political Science and Founding Director of IU South Bend's American Democracy Project. The presidential primary is underway. Today we discuss what voters need to know about primary elections, including how to get registered, how to vote, and who's on the ballot. We are joined by Mohammed Shabazz, who is the Democratic Board Member for the Voter Registration Office in St. Joseph County, Indiana. We are also joined by Republican Board Member Kimberly Riskovich. Welcome and thank you for being here. Well, thanks for having us. Mohammed, a lot of times people have questions about what a primary election actually is. When people ask you, how do you explain it to them? I just tell them we have two elections and the primary election is going to determine who's on the general election ballot. So and then I'll explain to them that, you know, Democrats have a race, Republicans have a race. And uh, sometimes you just have an incumbent who will be on the ballot, but that's the only one. You can still vote for that person. I mean, it's not going to change. But um, that you have to understand that Democrats, this is basically a Democratic primary. So you won't see Trump having a, an opponent, you know. No blanket primary voting where you can cross back and forth for who you like on each side of the aisle yet. Right. Uh, now, one of the things that has uh, happened to me is that I've had students say, I can't believe that I went to the polling place and they did not respect the secret ballot. Uh, I thought in this country we have a secret ballot. They asked me if I was a Democrat or a Republican. Do you get reports like that, Kim? We get them all the time, yeah, but we don't know how a person votes. We just know what ballot they're asking. So. I mean, it's still a secret ballot, but yes, we do need to know which ballot the person would like to have. Now, in some states, they'll actually put the Democrats on one side and the Republicans on the other side, so they wouldn't actually know. But in Indiana, we don't have official party registration. Is this one way that the parties kind of track your identity? Well, I don't know if, the, I wouldn't say that the parties are tracking your identity, but it does uh, leave a vote history. Uh, but that's not so important as the general election. So in the general election, you're going to get the ballot with whoever won in a primary. So right. no one knows. So you will only know how a person voted in a primary. But that does not mean that that person is going to vote that way in the general. So you can vote for Democrats, Republicans, straight ticket, not straight ticket, and mm -hmm. nobody will know in the general election. So important distinctions. Now, the primary for Indiana is not until May 5th. We've already seen these early caucuses and <laughs> primaries, uh, Iowa and New Hampshire. We have some coming up very quickly here in Nevada, in Nevada South Carolina, and even Michigan goes before Indiana on March 10th. Uh, what does this mean for the influence Indiana has on the presidential election? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've really ever had um, as much influence this early in the game. I think that we have more of an influence in the general election than the primary. And it's because of all the other ones that have already went forward before us, the different caucuses and the primaries. It just yeah, yeah I mean it is interesting to me 14 states will go on Super Tuesday in addition to Democrats abroad and America and Samoa and that will include this year California who want to move theirs up earlier to have more influence Muhammad I haven't really heard a lot of talk from folks in Indiana about changing that date well I, I you know that would have to be a state thing right so we're, we're on this county level um, but you also have Texas that's going to go so if someone jumps out to be the front runner, by the time they get to Indiana, they're going to have so many delegates that, you know, in the primary of the matter, because that's what that's what's going to determine, you know, when you get to the convention, who has the most most delegates. But um, I don't see if not moving it up, uh, how you have any influence. Uh, Unless especially, it really drags to the end. Especially in the general, right, unless yeah. it drags to the end, which uh, we're in May. Uh, is there any after that? 
Well, any? maybe if there's a brokered convention, we and the very few who go in June could actually have some kind of an influence right. uh, in a divided field. But I, I think that's an interesting point where some states have had this conversation, but we haven't heard much of that at the state level yet. Um, what people do want to know about and talk quite a bit about is what will the turnout look like? So, Kim, based on the past, what do we expect for a presidential election year primary? in St. Joe County or in Indiana? We usually have a fairly large turnout. Um, I'd say about 45% turnout, more so in the general. We have even more. We did, uh, I think it was 55,000 registrations the last presidential election. And that's huge. In every election, we seem to be getting more and more people out there voting. And that's very important. So I expect a large turnout. More in one. the presidential years in than the, the oh, midterms yeah. and more yeah. in the midterms than the local? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So a similar yeah. trend than what we see nationwide. Absolutely. Okay. Now, what about uh, this question of voter suppression? We sometimes hear people uh, talk about election laws in different states. Michigan recently, uh, through ballot initiative of the public, made several reforms to their election laws, including no excuse absentee voting, including same day registration. Uh, those are a couple things we don't have here in Indiana, Mohammed. Well, Indiana, so when you talk about voter suppression, so the state has a voter list maintenance. So we do that, what, every two years? Yes. We have to go through yeah. that. And uh, so what I tell people, and I tell them all the time, check your registration. If you go to indianavoters.com, check your registration. If you can't find it there, call uh, voter registration and we'll help you find it. But after the deadline, which is April 6th? It is April 6th. It's April 6th, and that is the deadline that we can register to vote. After that, there's nothing that we can do to register you to vote. So I, all, I, I, stre I can't stress it enough that people need to check their voter registration and check it often, you know. So that's how I feel about, because it is their responsibility to make sure that they are registered to vote. So Now so one of the reasons somebody might not be there but assume they are, it, are these checks of cleaning the voter rolls and sometimes there are false positive matches and sure. people may be purged. That's why you're saying go to indianavoters.com. And as I understand it, that's not really a commercial site. It's just a yeah. redirect to the right. in.gov yeah. yep. site. So people should feel safe going there. Yes. yes. But Elizabeth, yeah. another thing is, is that when people, we do the cleanup, everything is given to us from the state. Mm -hmm. And we do check it. If an individual were to show up on election day, believing that they were registered and they were removed from our rolls, as an error that we had made, we do a certificate of error and they are able to vote that day and their ballot is not a provisional, it goes directly into the machine. So we do everything we can to make sure people's voices are heard. And now if somebody isn't sure, if they're told that they're not on the rolls but they think they should be, should they go ahead and just request a provisional ballot and sort it out later, or what would you recommend? I recommend that there's always a um, phone call into our office to talk with either Mohammed or myself about that, because we'd be able to get it sorted out for them that day on the spot, instead of putting them off and having it possibly get lost in the shuffle or, uh, you know, no one knowing what's going on with it and their vote not counting. Now the bigger issues in terms of uh, debates about voter disenfranchisement have to come with things like uh, voter ID, which is very controversial and sometimes seen as a partisan issue. Do you have many voters uh, who push back against the ID requirement or have or aren't quite sure what kind of ID will work and what do you tell them? Well, that's so our poll workers, I mean, they have a sheet of, that showed them uh, IDs that they can use. But, you know, since we were the first in the nation to pass a voter ID law back in 2005, um, I think people have gotten fairly used to it. Um, I know that a lot of people were upset that the BMV moved out south because it would be harder for them to get there. Um, but so f as far as people complaining about having to use the ID, I haven't gotten uh, real complaints about that. 
Um, if they call us, we'll tell them what kind of ID they could use. Our inspectors will typically call if they're not sure if the ID is correct, um, and we can really figure that out. But I haven't, in my time at voter registration, I haven't really had any issues with people and their IDs. But I understand um, other states that do not have voter ID or whatever. That's up to them. I mean, it's the law of Indiana, so we have to follow it. Now, in terms of voter ID, people can use their driver's license. And what other kinds of IDs would be valid in St. Joe County? You can have your, your state ID, which is basically just the same as your driver's license. And they so can also get drive. that at the BMV? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can use your passport. You can use your student ID so long as it's an in-state student ID. It has to have a picture and an expiration date. And it has to and be from a state school, yeah, a not state a private. University. So you couldn't yeah. use your Notre, ID, your Notre Dame student ID a to federal vote, but ID you can use also. Your, yeah, a federal ID, military mm -hmm. ID. Mm -hmm. Okay, so issued by the federal state government, yep. have an expiration date, and a um, picture, and a picture. picture. Yep. not be expired or since well, it well, the it last expired. election. It can yeah. be expired since the last general, general election. Yep. Okay, perfect. Yep. And in terms of voting procedures, there are different ways that people can cast their ballot, but sometimes people get a little bit confused about this. So I wonder if you could maybe talk about some of the options that people have. Oh yeah, um, there's early voting, and that's where people can go in. It starts six weeks before the election. It's gonna be April 7th it'll open. And they're there Monday through Friday, and they can go in for pretty much any reason and just vote early. Now you're not casting your ballot and putting it through a tabulating machine, but it's gonna be sealed and, and it'll count on election night. And then also you can have um, travel board come out if you're unable to leave your residency and uh, have them come to you. And they also go to the nursing home, so if you have family or loved ones that may need that service, again, they would need to call either our office or the absentee. And then on election day, you can go and vote at any of our vote centers because we are now a vote center county. Which is and exciting. that is new for St. Joseph County. Some of the surrounding counties, Elkhart, for example, yep. already switched to a vote center model. Mohammed, what makes a vote center model different than the precinct-based model that we had before? Because now you can vote at any polling place. And so unlike a lot of our surrounding counties, when they started it, they took out a lot of polling locations or vote centers, but we didn't do that. No. Um, some that were across the street from each other, we did uh, consolidate those, but I think that um, we were gonna do that with a couple anyway. So, um, but we didn't really remove any, any places where people can go vote. But now, you can just go vote wherever you want. So, as for me, like where I live, I would have to go down to the Lieber Park tennis courts, but I live right across the street from the NNN. So now I can just go to the NNN, which does not apply to us because we have to vote early anyway. <laughs> True story. <laughs> <laughs> but so folks this time will not be told you're in the wrong polling place, go elsewhere. They can yeah. cast their vote anywhere as long as it's within county lines. Yeah. That's correct. Okay, um, but for our county at least, it was not at this point seen as a cost-saving measures, it sounds like it was more. Right, not at this time, it's more of a convenience. Okay. On election night, especially when it's towards the time when the polls are getting ready to close, we have a number of individuals who are getting off of work. They go to go to the polls to vote and to find out they're at the wrong location and they don't have time to make it to their exact location. And they, they'll do a provisional ballot, um, hoping that it'll get counted. But in reality, it, it wouldn't get counted because they're at the wrong location. Now we don't have that problem. I'm extremely excited about this. Now, in terms of uh, the issue of technology, uh, the, each county can have different voting machines and uh, St. Joseph County, where you both work, uh, got some upgrades to machines recently, and yep. for the most part, they seem to work well on the municipal elections, but there were a few reports of problems, or maybe folks who weren't trained to 
quite tabulate or read those right. So I wonder what plans you're putting in place now that we'll have a big primary and then a huge general election to address those training issues, make sure everybody knows how to use the tech, but also make sure the tech is working. Well, we have to yeah. go through, I mean, it's basically an audit. So yeah. you have random machines out of all the machines. How many of it that they have to do? They have to do a third of them. Yeah, so you have it's to like you have to do a third so. of them. And it's so. spot, randomly spot checking a third of the machines to make sure there are no mm -hmm. malfunctions. And that will right. happen before election day, like shortly before election day. And then we have texts that will go out uh, to the vote centers to uh, make sure. I mean, if you call them and have them problems, there's a tech on the way. Right. Um, but most of the problems that we had was were not with the new technology. It was with you know, like the printer, like very problems that people changing should, the paper. yeah, changing the paper and things like that, <laughs> or dust getting in there. And then, of course, you'll have people who are resistant to change, and so you'll see uh, complaints, even if there are <coughs> really no problems. Now, you mentioned the printer. I think this is critical. St. Joe County and most counties in uh, Indiana, as I understand it, do have that paper backup. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Is that something that seems to be really important to the election officials? It is generally? very important, Elizabeth. We have to have the paper. Um, as of right now, you know, we're all technology and everything. We have to save this information. If there's to be a recount and uh, they can recount either the paper ballots and compare them to the numbers, then we know if the machines are working properly and tabulating the way they need to. Um, our election board really likes their paper, mm -hmm. so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, and, and as we think about this election, for the primary election in 2020, okay. people are talking a lot about the presidential election, but there will be other races on the ballot. Uh, Mohammed, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what people can actually expect to see on their primary ballots. Well, you'll see um, there are um, Indiana House races. Uh, as everyone know that Pat Bauer stepped down. So you have an open seat there. So you'll have a, a primary race for that. Uh, Dave Nisgoski has been primary. Um, who else has been primary? Well, you, got, you have all we the have, presidential primaries. Right, you have, we have our federal, but we also have a lot of local yeah, ones. Like Treasurer um, and. Treasurer, but there's County no. County Commissioner. The yeah, Commissioner's we have two races. Commissioners. Um, that's actually contested on the Democrat and Republican side. It um, is. But then you have races that have no contender in the primary, but if there's a Democrat up there running, Republicans still, after the primary, after the primary yeah. can, they have until June to then put somebody on the ballot that, that they choose. Yeah, they can appoint them. Yeah. There's also a South Bend school referendum yep, they're, they're that referendum. will be on there. and. Uh, so depending on which county people are in then, they could see uh, governor and their, their U.S. Mm -hmm. House reps. Uh, I don't know that we mentioned them, but the state senate, yep. Indiana House or state house. Um, the auditors and recorders, we didn't yep. talk about so many of them in St. Joe are not contested. Um, treasurer, coroner, surveyor. So all these folks will have their name, assessor, the commissioners, the county council in some counties, including St. Joe will have their name even if they're the only person running. Yes. Uh, and then people assume that they've basically won the election, but what you're saying is that's not true because the other party can still field right. a candidate right. even if they couldn't find somebody in time for the primary. Well, I'll give you yep. an example. Um, the clerk's race, the city clerk's race. So she had no challenger and then she wins the primary and then she resigns. So at that point, it was too late for Republicans to appoint anyone. So then the Democrats just had a caucus to fill to fill that that vacancy. So, and she being Krima Fowler, who right. at Karima that Fowler, time yeah. was the clerk, mm -hmm. uh, but then moved to become the CFO of the South Bend Community right, School right. Corporation. Uh, that reminds me of the ballot initiative. Some counties will have public questions yep. uh, and South Bend is one of those and that will be about whether or not folks are willing to pay more taxes to support the school system. Yep. Um, in terms of the actual public question when people are voting on a referendum like that, 
what happens with the 17 year old who can vote in the primary to pick their candidates for the general election are they allowed to cast a ballot on the, on referendum. the referendum they, they have not. to leave that blank actually what happens especially with our new equipment it prints up the ballot that is appropriate for you so they'll never see the question on there and that's just like um, overseas voters the ballot that will be printed and sent to them or emailed to them is for them specifically. So, so. just as it recognizes which district you're in for right. state house and state senate and school board and the general and all of these, it will recognize your age and flag you as being ineligible Correct. for that question. Yep. I guess that is a, a good <laughs> thing about technology. I think people are sometimes afraid of making a mistake and then getting into legal trouble for doing something that they didn't realize was wrong. Um, so, as we think then about those uh, elections, uh, Mohammed, you were mentioning some of the races to watch locally. Uh, which ones in particular then really stick out and, and should people in St. Joe County be watching? The commissioner's race is going to be that, that race that everyone is focused on. Um, because it's going to be so contested on both sides. I mean, uh, you, on the Democratic side, you have two well-known candidates. You have mm -hmm. uh, Dave Thomas and Oliver Davis. And then on the Republican side, you have Derek Dieter, and I'm not sure of, of the other guy's name. I probably shouldn't say that right now. <laughs> but um, so you're going to have con contestants on both sides. So people are going to come out, and it's always good if you ask me to have races like that because then you get people to the polls who would not necessarily come to the polls. Right. You know, so like, and as you're talking, some of our we have 22 counties in our viewing area, and so what makes the, this so contested in part is the current commissioner Dave Thomas against a former city councilman and mayoral candidate Oliver Davis yeah. Jr. And on the other side, Derek Dieter also has been a very well-known member of the political community, right? Um, and he. Uh, ran against Krima Fowler, in fact, as mm -hmm. clerk was the last time he ran. Uh, and so you have a lot of knowns. And then, of course, Jordan is not as well known, but we do have a contested uh, Republican primary and Democratic uh, yeah. primary. So it will be interesting to see how much people actually focus on those county level races when you have a presidential race. Um, well, do you see a lot of roll off on the ballot in terms of people? Uh, voting at the top of the ticket but less on the bottom or do people seem for to carry most, through? For the most part people carry through. Mm -hmm. They do. Okay well what about what if you're thinking about what voters should know as they move into this primary election season anything that we haven't discussed that you think is really important or things that are really critical for people to remember uh, okay. and also what advice would you give for people who are kind of confused where would you send them for information if they want to know more about who the heck is <laughs> on my ballot or or how do I cast my vote what are my options I'm going to be out of town on election day what do I do what's the best if way to you find have that information any questions about casting your vote you should call voter registration absolutely at 574-235-9521 uh, call voter registration anyone in the office can help you out with that if you have pro questions about your absentee call voter registration if you want to know who's on your ballot uh, indianavoter.com yep. is a good place to go put in your information click who's on my ballot that'll come up and then it's up to you then to do the research on that person um, I, I can tell you though Elizabeth if you go to um, the party's websites there are usually bios on there about them and then it will have links to take you to their specific website where they can read more about this individual and what they're about and um, everything else I think Muhammad pretty much covered yeah and check your registration check it and check often early and often early and often if you have questions about that call voter registration yeah, the other thing in St. Joe and Elkhart County, but also counties across the state and nation is vote411.org where candidates enter their own statements in mm -hmm. their own words. And we've had 100% participation locally uh, for contested races where people can also get some information about how to compare those candidates side by side at all levels. Um, but when in doubt, 
where to vote, what to do, either call mm -hmm. your county voter registration office. It's not just for registration, but also for information. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, or go to voter, um, to Indiana Indiana voters. Voters. Dot com. Com. Yep. Okay. Well, perfect. I think that's very useful for people. And unfortunately, we are out of time for this week, but our guests are going to stick around and you can catch the rest of our conversation online at WNIT.org slash PS. I'm your host, Elizabeth Benyon, asking you to tune in again next week and reminding you that it takes all of us to make democracy work.